Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sandy Abernathy. I know that you do not want to be here. To you, this is all a bad dream. I wish I could help you wake up from this dream, but I cannot because it's not a dream at all. We are all here for one reason. You or a loved one has been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. Now, this is where I come in. I'm here to help you understand what your diagnosis means, what to expect, and answer any questions that you may have. I'm very passionate about this specific topic for a personal reason. Um, my best friend's world was turned upside down when her son was diagnosed with CF and it completely changed her life. I'm going to be presenting to you the understanding of cystic fibrosis. Above are some goals and objectives that I will discuss and the goal is to educate parents and patients about cystic fibrosis, conditions, expectations, and treatments. Here are seven objectives that I will address. One, you will know the, the history of cystic fibrosis. Two, you will know what causes cystic fibrosis. Three, you will understand what happens after being diagnosed. Four, you will understand what to expect from cystic fibrosis. Five, you will know the effects that CF can have on the body. Six, you will know treatments that are available for CF patients. And seven, you will know what research is being done that is in place for CF. There is a fill in the blank cystic fibrosis information sheet provided in front of you for you to fill out during the presentation. If you have any questions, please ask. Okay, so what is cystic fibrosis? So cystic fibrosis is an inherited life-threatening disease that affects the lungs and the digestive system. Cystic fibrosis affects the cells that produce mucus, sweat, and digestive juices. Um, it causes these fluids to become thick and sticky. Then, they plug up the tubes, ducts, and passageways. Symptoms may vary and can include a cough, repeated lung infections, and the inability to gain weight, and also fatty stools. Um, treatments may ease the symptoms um, and reduce complications. Um, newborn screenings can help with the early diagnosis. So the history of cystic fibrosis. It was thought that long ago that patients with cystic fibrosis were victims of witchcraft. It was not until 1938 when Dr. Dorothy Anderson, a pathologist, termed the first description of the disease and named it cystic fibrosis of the pancreas. She noticed this while doing autopsy on malnutrition children. 10 years later in New York, during a heat wave, Dr. Paul Santanese um, distinguished that patients with CF had higher sweat concentrations of salt during dehydration. Um, and then it was not until 1980 when CF was put on the radar for research or development for medications. So statistics, um, statistics show that cystic fibrosis is a recessive genetic disease that is more common within the Caucasian population in the United States. Cystic fibrosis is less common in other ethnic groups. Um, above is a list um, showing the statistics in Caucasian, um, African Americans and Asian Americans. Girls tend to have more complications than boys with CF. Um, one in 2,500 to 3,500 are affected at birth. Um, in Caucasian Americans, one in 17,000 African Americans, and then one in 31,000 births in Asian Americans. 
life expectancy. Um, young adults with CF can finish college or find jobs. Um, lung disease eventually worsens to the point where the person is disabled. Today, the average life expectancy for a patient with CF is around the age of 44. Um, death is most often caused from lung complications. Okay, so what causes cystic fibrosis? Um, above is an image of an explanation um, of how the CFTR is not working properly causing issues um, within the CF patient. Patients that have CF um, patients that have CF um, have a mutation in a gene called the CFTR cystic fibrosis transma transmembrane conductase regulator. Um, that causes the protein not to work properly. There are multiple strands of different um, CFTR mutations, some depending on the severity of the CFTR protein channel that may be missing or just dysfunctional. This protein is in a healthy individual would send signals and transport the correct amount of chloride ions across the channel for the body to work properly. Um, and here is a description. Um, as you can see here, um, this is how a normal CFTR channel works and this is how a um, affected CFTR does not work properly. So um, here you can see the chloride ions are going across the cell membrane and out into the cell, uh, or outside of the cell. Here, um, the chloride ions, the CFTR um, protein is actually closed off and not allowing those ions to be released outside of the cell. So that is where that causes the mucus to build up with inside um, the lungs, um, causing issues throughout the body. So percentages of being a carrier or a recipient. Um, a patient inherits CF because each parent contributes a defective CF gene. If you only inherit one defective gene, then you are considered just a carrier. Um, carriers do not show symptoms. Two parent carriers increase the risk of each child having cystic fibrosis is as followed below. So um, here is a picture that will show you, um, you know, a healthy child has no CF genes. Um, a carrier of a CF gene can receive one and just be a carrier. Um, also, one can be considered just a carrier, um, but the chances of having a child with cystic fibrosis are here if both parents are a carrier of CF gene. Um, so you have a 25% chance that the child will have CF. You have a 50% chance that the child will be a carrier but will not have CF. And then you have another 25% chance that the child will not be a carrier and will not have CF. So, prevention. There are no real way to prevent cystic fibrosis, but there is ways that you can find out if you are a carrier and how to prepare yourself with a diagnosis. Um, genetic testing is, a, is blood that is drawn um, on you and your partner to give a detailed description of any genetic disease or condition that can be passed on to your child. A lot of parents do genetic testing after having their first child with CF. 
Um, there are options available if you are not sure if you're wanting to risk the chance of having another child with CF. Um, there's always an adoption. There's always um, in vitro, so you can, um, you know, decrease the chance of having a child with cystic fibrosis doing that. Um, abstinences, abstinence is not having sex at all or having protected sex. Um, also checking into um, background testing using the 23andMe DNA kit. Um, so if you are adopted and you don't know anything about your family, you can actually use that um, and see if there is any other family members that are carriers. So testing, it's a two-step process that must be done to confirm a diagnosis. Um, physicians can determine that you are a carrier or if you have the CF gene. Um, the newborn screening is a detailed blood work that um, is ran through a lab that will confirm if you are a carrier. Um, and then the sweat test will confirm if you have the gene. It's a two-step process um, that must be done to confirm the diagnosis. Okay, so diagnose. Um, so you've been diagnosed. Um, when you're diagnosed, it is a scary feeling um, for the parents. Um, you don't know what to expect. Um, some of you may have never even heard of cystic fibrosis. Um, it is becoming a little bit more common um, that you hear it, um, but it almost seems like a prison sentencing. Um, when diagnosed, you will be given um, a type and a strand that you have. Um, each specific strand has a code and that code symbolizes what type of CF you have. If some being more life-threatening um, and descriptive of how the CFTR um, protein is affected and what type of treatment options are available for your child or yourself. Having multiple children with two different strands can be life-threatening but we will um, talk more on that later. Okay, so carrier types. Um, this is the most important um, slide that I will discuss with you um, because this kind of touches base on everything else that I'll go over throughout my presentation. Um, so there are more than um, 2,000 types of mutations um, some causing more severe symptoms than others due to the cell not being able to function properly. Um, shown here is an image of the different ways that the proteins are dysfunctional. This causes damage to the organs, lungs, and the rest of the body. Um, and here, this is showing on number one um, that there's no protein um, at all. So it's not working properly at all. Um, number two, uh, it's showing that there's no um, traffic. So, um, it's not being able to use, this, the cell is not being able to um, transport properly. Um, and then number three, there's no function. So there's no function at all. Um, there are some that um, of the chloride ions relieve, relieving the cell. Um, but in the end, number four, there's less functioning. So you, you have a little bit of um, what needs to be done, but it's still not working properly. Um, and then five is less protein. And then number six is less stable. Um, so all these um, kind of break down individually showing you how the cell doesn't work um, and causes issues within the body. 
So what to expect from cystic fibrosis? Um, this is the hardest part to talk about, is what to expect. It is the scariest because you think you are the only one that thinks like this and you are not. It's okay to feel guilty. Um, most parents um, feel this way because it was your genetic makeup that caused your child to have cystic fibrosis. Um, it can cause depression because you don't know what's next. Um, you think constantly about um, your child, um, you know, when will be the last time you see them. Um, uncertain that you can do this, that you can help your child get through this as well. Um, and then fear is the top feeling to have because you don't know what to expect and no one does. Um, I will tell you that you must take every day one step at a time. There are support groups and counseling that can help you cope um, and even get the resources that you need. Okay, so doctor visits. After birth, you were referred to a specialist and a cystic fibrosis clinic. Um, after finding out, they will do a complete workup every two weeks to evaluate you or your child for symptoms. Um, eventually, you will work your way up to going once a month and then once every three months based on your health. Um, infants are seen every two weeks based on their health. Um, as the patient ages, they can be seen once again once every three months based off their health. Um, if you remain healthy, you can be seen once every three months for the rest of your life. Um, and visits can be more frequent due to health. You will receive blood work, x-rays, um, and chest x-rays um, once a year. Okay, so physicians, team members. Um, above are the team of doctors um, that your child will see throughout their lifetime to ensure a healthy life. Um, a, a pulmonologist specializes in cystic fibrosis to diagnose and treat lung disease within the respiratory system, especially CF. Um, the respiratory therapist um, is a lung and breathing specialist. Um, they teach techniques and therapies for you to keep your lungs healthy. Uh, the gastroenterologist um, addresses any issues within the esophagus, the stomach, intestines, and liver, and also um, the digestion of your foods. Okay, so a dietitian, they will develop a nutrition plan um, for maintaining healthy body weight. Um, the higher the body weight, the better um, lung function that you have. So they're really crucial about um, staying on top of your diet. Um, then you have a social worker. Um, social workers help navigate um, any insurance um, coverage that you may need or help getting insurance. Um, they can also help with accommodations for schools, um, you know, making sure that your child's receiving um, the proper care, um, and then also just medications, um, trying to get those approved um, so that your child can have those. There's also counseling, once again, uh, counseling to cope with behavior, cope with anxiety and depression. Also, as your child gets older, um, they may need to see a counselor. Um, you know, they need to learn how to balance treatment and life with cystic fibrosis. Um, they provide support groups. Um, to reach out to you um, and also for you to reach out to them. Um, there's some people that are nervous and scared and they don't want to um, not 
they're just embarrassed. They don't they don't know how how other parents feel. So this will this will definitely help with that. This team will work together to address the health of the patient and treatment options. Um, in Georgia, the Pediatric Children's Healthcare of Atlanta is amazing. They um, actually have a CF clinic. Um, when being seen in Atlanta, you are seen by all the people listed above. Um, it's a long appointment, but all doctors communicate and come to a conclusion about your treatment options. Not all states um, have this, depending on your location. Some CF patients that have um, CF have to visit multiple doctors. They have to go to these um, individually. Um, and so they tend to be um, hospitalized um, for more complications because of the miscommunications between doctors and not knowing enough about CF to treat um, flare-ups efficient or yeah efficiently. Okay, so effects that um, CF can have on the body. Um, some symptoms may include babies are first seen with digestive system. Um, issues such as loose oily stools, um, they're very gassy, they have thickened mucus when spitting up. Um, as you get older, you start to see more respiratory um, failure, um, wheezing, hard to breathe, and congestion. CF patients are more susceptible to developing diabetes, um, and then CF can affect the lungs, the liver, and the kidneys. So treatments, there are multiple options for treatments. Um, enzymes are the first step to helping with the diagnosis. Um, medications, um, therapy, diets, and exercise. Treatment options are based on the condition and the health of the patient. Enzymes will always be given to the patient because it helps break down the food and the mucus that the body cannot do itself because of that defect in that CETFR protein. Um, I will go into detail on each slide how this is considered treatment. Okay, so medications are now something that will be a part of your everyday routine. These medications only help treat symptoms of CF. They do not correct the problem of the defective CFTR protein. Um, so you have things like inhalers. Inhalers contain steroid um, steroids to help fight off bacteria and strengthen the lungs. Um, breathing treatments contain a saline solution that also help keeps the lungs clean. Um, on the next slide, um, there's a clip of a patient using CPT therapy on infant. And then vitamins are essential in patients with the deficiency um, that are caused because of cystic fibrosis. Um, most CF patients take vitamins to ensure that they are not deficient. The most common are A, D, E, and K. Okay. So here's the video. I'm going to share this with you. and this is my son Johnny and this is Cystic Fibrosis Our Way. <laughs> Johnny is five months old and has been treated here at CHOP for CF since he was five days old. Every day Johnny receives enzymes to help him digest and absorb his food. He also gets chest PT twice a day and we try to make it as normal in our daily routine as possible. 
And this is how we do his enzymes and chest PT. To give Johnny his enzymes, we put them on a spoon with a little applesauce. He receives them before every bottle or any time he eats. Enzymes have no taste at all. Just make sure you don't crush them or chew them. I always wash my hands and remove any rings or bracelets on the hand that I use the percussor with before I start his chest PT. Johnny's chest PT is done in two minute increments on 12 positions on his body. We try to make Johnny's chest PT fun. We sing fun songs, we do fun rhyming games, and we know it takes an entire Disney show to do all of his chest PT. I never do percussion on his bare skin, and as he gets older, we'll use larger percussion cups or we can use cupped hands. And if he needs it throughout or after his chest PT, we can suction his nose to make sure we get everything out. Everything I do on the one side, I repeat on the other. So that is how enzymes and chest PT are done. Johnny is obviously too young for us to know what he wants to be when he grows up, but we already think he's a superhero. He's the toughest little kid we know. Okay. So um, this is the second most important task that should be done for CF. The manual cut percussor um, will be done two times a day to help break up the mucus from the lungs. You simply beat the cup against their chest, back, or sides in 12 different positions. If any signs of sickness, such as runny nose, it needs to be done four times a day to prevent any bacteria from getting stuck in the mucus and causing infection. The patient will eventually receive a vest that will forcefully shake the patient to help break the mucus up, usually around nine months old or until the baby can maintain balance while sitting. It also depends on their chest size. Okay. So diet, um, you as the patient will be monitored closely by a dietitian and a GI specialist throughout your lifetime. So this is where I was saying that a diet is very important. Patients with CF need um, excessive protein and calories because their body does not absorb nutrition like the average body. So making sure that they have more helps them make sure that they absorb enough um, so patients with CF are encouraged to have high, to have a high protein and high calorie and salt diet. Salt also is released at a higher level in CF patients. So replenishing what they lose is important so that they make, um, so they may experience electrolyte imbalances and cause dehydration. Um, supplements help decrease deficiencies when the patient cannot maintain them by their self. Um, so the last option, if you're not maintaining optimal nutritional status, is a G-tube that is placed in the abdominal wall and formula um, can be placed in that tube um, so that they receive the adequate amount of nutrition. Water intake is also key to help prevent dehydration due to the high concentrations of salt. So here's the food pyramid. Like I said, um, taking enzymes helps the patient digest their foods. Foods that are important are high calorie and proteins such as nuts, cheese, meats, um, and anything with fat. Um, if that's not enough, they consider um, calorie boosters such as butter, oil, avocados, nuts, and seeds. Patients with CF need excess amounts of protein and calories um, because their body does not absorb 
nutrition like the average body. So making sure that they have more um, so that they can maintain that optimal health. Okay, so exercise. Um, exercise is encouraged to stay active um, and to exercise daily. Playing sports and doing activities as a family keeps them involved and active. Um, activities can include swimming, riding bikes, running, um, and then participating in physical activities can help strengthen the lungs. Um, when exercising frequently, um, the breaking down of the lungs can become slower. Research shows that um, living closer to the beach is better for your lungs because of that salty air. Resembles that saline breathing treatments um, that help clear the lungs. So that's pretty cool. Um, we all need to move to the beach. <laughs> okay, so surgeries. The most common surgery for a patient with CF um, is to have a lung transplant. In some cases, a patient will need two transplants within a lifetime. Um, it can also affect the kidneys, the liver, and the digestive system. The effect on the lungs can cause a persistent cough, shortness of breath, um, and cause lung infections such as bronchitis and pneumonia. Um, a common cold could land a month-long stay in the hospital for a patient with CF. Um, it is very important for patients with CF to avoid any germs and bacteria that can cause illness. Um, the reoccurrence of infection causes the lungs to become weaker and weaker. Um, so that's why it's so important um, to avoid bacteria and germs so that you don't have that constant infection and breaking down the lungs. Okay. So, um, organ transplant. Um, the most common question asked is how I get my child on the transplant list. Above is the contact information um, as well as an email address and the link that provides frequently asked questions. The website is very helpful at explaining each question in great detail. So I would definitely uh, visit these websites and um, if you can't answer the questions on the website, there is a phone number and also an email that someone can help you. Okay. So the recovery and survival. Transplants can require different requirements as far as recovery time. Lung transplants can have as long as 14 days in ICU if no complications arise. 50% um, of CF patients live five years or more after a transplant. For the liver transplant, Adults have a five-year um, survival rate of 72%. Children have a five-year survival rate of 85%. Um, the most common transplant in patients with cystic fibrosis is the lung transplant um, with liver and kidney coming um, not far behind. So research advancements. This is where I start um, talking to you guys about research that is out to help um, patients with CF. So there are four types of treatments that could be a game changer for CF. They are called the potentiators, the correctors, amplifiers, and the next generation modulators. Um, so this is a video showing how defective CFTR protein causes problems within the cell. And um, I will go over 
with you throughout the next presentations of how the medications that I just said um, actually help the CFTR work properly. So we'll watch this video. I'm going to explain it as we're watching it. So we'll watch it first. watch it again and now I'll explain it. So here you can see the chloride ions are not able to go. The medication is taken and then now the CFTR protein can work properly and allow those ions throughout um, the cell. This is some of the medications that I will describe over the next couple of slides. So potentiators. So Potentiators are CFTR modulators that hold the gate open so that chloride ions can flow through the cell membrane. Um, Colonico is the name brand. Um, is a game changer for patients that need help with the gating and the conduction mutations in the CFTR. In this type of CF, um, in all the CF mutations, some CF TR protein reaches the cell surface. Um, however, either not enough protein reaches the cell surface or the protein does not allow enough chloride to flow through. By holding that gate of the CFTR protein open, um, potentiators allow more chlor chloride ions to flow through and reduces the symptoms of CF. Um, Calatico is an approved medication that has helped many CF patients. Okay. So correctors. Correctors are drugs that help the protein to form the right shape and travel to the surface and stay there longer. Um, but even with correctors, only some of the CFTR protein reaches the cell. Correctors can be used in conjunction with the potentiators and can help reduce symptoms of CF. The two corrector medications listed above, the um, Alexacaftor and the Tezacaftor, um, The two corrector medications listed above with a potentiator, um, the Kaladico combined was combined to form Trikafta. Um, it's a huge game changer and it allows the whole process of the CFTR protein process to happen. Um, nearly 90% of CF patients have at least one mutation which prevents the CFTR protein from forming the correct 3D shape. So correctors are a huge game changer um, when combined with the potentiators. So the amplifiers um, are drugs that evaluate the amount of CFTR protein that the cell can make Many CFTR mutations produce inadequate amounts of CFTR protein. Amplifiers have not been released for use yet because they're still being tested. Um, so hopefully we'll have an answer to that soon and can also provide that for our CF patients. Okay, so next gen generation modulators. Um, the drugs that I have discussed are considered the first generation drugs. Um, the Alex Cafetor um, is potentially more effective than the first generation CFTR modulators. Um, other therapies are in development and must be approved. These next generation drugs can likely be 
be a part of the triple combination therapy to provide more people with CF a variety of treatment options. So hopefully um, that will also, um, we'll get some answers and research done on that as well. So let's see here. Okay, so the golden question is, is there a cure for CF? There um, is no cure for CF. Um, cystic fibrosis has advanced with treatment options and extending the average life expectancy than patients that had CF 10 years ago. The research department is putting new research um, and medicines out daily that have helped patients live longer. New medications are going through trials. That is the equivalent of finding glucose for diabetes. There is no cure for CF because a cure would mean that there was a medication or a shot or um, a drug um, that could be taken and it would completely go away. Um, even though we have not got that far, it's becoming easier to manage and live without complications and symptoms from cystic fibrosis. Okay, so funding. Um, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation um, is a national organization that helps fund money for treatment and research. There are so many ways that you can be an advocate for your child. You can help raise awareness by sharing your journey, creating a fundraiser or an event to help raise money or donate money for the cause. Um, there are many ways to donate to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. My best friend um, is kind of a germaphobe now with all this and um, likes to ask family and friends to donate to the foundation on her son's birthday um, or Christmas uh, instead of buying gifts. Um, there is also an annual Great Strides Walk that helps raise awareness and funding for the program. All family, friends, and businesses are able to attend. So, summary, um, I will um, read over this just to touch base on what we went over. So, cystic fibrosis, once again, is a genetic disorder. Um, there are different strands um, and severity of CF. There are no preventions of getting CF because it's genetically passed down. Testing is a two-step diagnosis. Remember, we have to do um, a blood work and sweat test to confirm the diagnosis. Um, the effects, it affects the body and the organs. So um, the digestive system, the lungs, the kidneys, the liver, um, CF affects all those. The treatment options, we went over those. Um, there's enzymes, inhalers, um, CPT therapy, all kinds of different things um, that have helped uh, increase the life of CF patients. There's also medications. We went over some of those. Um, you know, some patients have to um, take supplements, um, also have to take vitamins to help with deficiency. There are um, the medications that we just went over, the potentiators, the amplifiers, um, and then uh, the next generation drugs. Uh, also, um, diet and exercise. Um, like I said, they are very, um, hard and want you to maintain a healthy um, diet throughout to make sure that you're receiving um, or staying healthy. 
Um, exercise is going to keep, help keep you active, um, keep your lungs healthy. Um, also, we went over doctor's appointments, what to expect um, when visiting a clinic, or even if you're if you're not able to see a clinic, what what you may expect if you live in um, an um, urban area. You know, you may have to visit multiple um, doctors that um, the surgeries what kind of surgeries that you may encounter throughout your lifetime such as lung transplants sometimes even multiple lung transplants um, you know there could be uh, you need a kidney transplant a liver transplant um, we talked about the recovery and how um, that increases in your life expectancy um, and also just the statistics of survival after having those done. We also went over the research advancements that they're doing right now um, with the, um, the triple modulators and the, um, the, medic, the second modulators that they're trying to include two drugs for, you know, the CFTR and how it works. Um, and then the triple modulator, if that strand that you have doesn't work at all, uh, doesn't work, any of those um, corrects that protein um, with the triple modu modulator um, that they're coming out with. Also, we talked about a cure. You know, we, we hope that one day we will get to that point um, that Right now, there is not a cure, um, but we hope that we reach that um, very soon. And then we discuss funding. Um, you know, funding is a big way that we find out that this is how um, patients receive care, how they um, continue to find more um, advancements and um, increase the life of patients. So we hope to continue to do that. Okay, so um, are there any questions that you may have that I did not go over or any answers that I need to go over in more detail? Um, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. If there is anything that I can help you better understand, please ask. If I do not know the answer, I will try to get you in touch with someone who does. If you need me to go over the fill in the blank um, cystic fibrosis um, information sheet, um, because I was going too fast, uh, please come up. I will more than well, uh, more than uh, happily give you the answer sheet to make sure that you wrote everything down correctly. Um, also, after the slides here, um, there are my references where you can locate the information that I have found throughout the presentation. There's also my brochure, um, my cystic fibrosis information sheet, my evaluation form. If you can, uh, please leave that out by the door as you exit. Um, and then I will also provide the link to this presentation on YouTube so that you can um, come back and watch if you have any questions or I did not um, answer correctly the first time. Um, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I'll just kind of flip through here just so you can see. So this is my brochure page one, brochure page two. This is my evaluation form. Once again, these were handed out and are in front of you. Please feel free to fill those out and leave them at the front door as you leave. Here is um, the cystic fibrosis information answers. Um, I did provide you with the blank and then I have the answers here if you'd like to um, look throughout the PowerPoint that I printed for you guys. Um, 
you can see the answers there. And then um, here are my research articles and some of the information that I pulled throughout my presentation. And then my references, you can visit any of these websites and review any of that information. Um, and then here's also my classroom setup and supplies. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.